Well, hi there. I'm here today to tell you how to build an awesome bioactive enclosure for tropical arboreal reptiles like maybe a crested gecko, day geckos, anything like this that is okay in a glass enclosure and that needs more of a tropical sort of environment than a desert one. Today we're going to walk you through all the steps. We're so excited that you're here. For starters, we're going to need to know all the supplies that you'll need to purchase in order to make this project a reality. We'll have links in the description to all of these things. And actually, when you use those links, it helps support our channel. So if this is a project you think you might want to do, please, please use the links in the description. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what all these things are because you will want to have all of them on hand. This is like bacon cookies. You don't want to find out halfway through that you don't have all the ingredients. So I'll just work my way from one side to the other. Maybe I'll start over here because this is obviously the most important thing you're going to need, which is a tank. And what I have is the Zoomed 12 by 12 by 18 enclosure. This is an enclosure that you could use for things like smaller species of day geckos, younger crested geckos, and a number of arboreal species because it's taller than it is wide. Of course, if you're going to have larger animals or more active animals inside of it, you're going to need a bigger tank. And they also sell larger versions of this tank. So that is a wonderful enclosure. I like the Zoomed enclosure because it has one big front opening door, which is going to make it a lot easier for us to build this and a lot easier for you to work on the tank, to access your animals, access the things in the enclosure in the future. Exoterra also makes a wonderful tank, same dimensions. Uh, but it has two doors in the front, so there's a kind of a seam right down the middle. If you like that better, we'll have that in the description as well. So the Zoomed or the Exoterra, they're both great. It's just a style preference. I've got cork bark. Cork bark is wonderful because it's not going to mold on you. And, and that would be a problem that you might run into if you used, say, bark off of a tree in your yard. In the damp enclosure it may start to grow mold and that can be a real problem and along those same lines I've got this this is called spider wood and spider wood is going to be great for climbing branches and it also is not very uh, inclined to mold it doesn't mold nearly as much as a stick you might find in your yard wood other kinds of wood that you might use would be like Malaysian driftwood or Mopani wood and we'll have links to those as well down in our description rocks these are just rocks from the yard. You don't need to order a rock off the internet. These rocks are not even going to be part of the enclosure when it's finished. They are just going to help us with this project a little bit. This right here is called forest moss and it is compressed sphagnum moss. We're going to include this gorilla glue in the biggest bottle you can get. You'll need gorilla glue. Eco Earth also made by Zoomed. And, and we did include an Exoterra product here because we're not like a commercial for Zoomed. But Zoomed is wonderful and so is Exoterra. There are lots of great companies that make these things. Echo Earth is going to be the substrate that we're going to use. We're also going to use it on our backdrop. It's got three bricks of it. You can buy it as a single brick. We'll probably only need one brick for this project. But it's cheaper when you buy three. And I do a lot of projects like this. This is a pothos. It's a plant. Actually, you can use a lot of different kinds of plants. I like the pothos because they're bulletproof. They don't need a lot of light, which is good because it means I don't need a whole lot of extra lighting for this tank, just for the plants. They also do well if they're sitting in water or if it gets fairly dry. So it's really difficult to kill a pothos. There are other great plants as well that you might choose to use. We're going to need some sand, really fine grained sand. Scissors! You're going to need some scissors. They're not going to get incorporated into your tank, so you can just use any scissors you have around the house. Uh, other tools like the Leatherman Skeleton tool that I just got. Love it. It could be great as well. You're going to need a bucket. You're going to need a spray bottle. You're going to need a hood for your tank. And this is a Zoomed hood. This is built specifically for this tank. There's also an Exoterra hood just like it made for the Exoterra tank. And these hoods come in different sizes depending on the size tank that you're going to be using. Just make sure that your hood is the same width as your tank. And you're going to need the right kind of light bulbs which is going to be a 5000K light bulb. That's a fluorescent bulb, and that way it won't generate very much heat because you don't want to cook the animal that lives in here. If it's something like a crested gecko, you probably don't want to add really any heat at all or very little, and that light bulb will keep your plants alive, but it won't kill your gecko. That's a winning combination. You're going to need some of these cups, 
if especially if you're keeping a crested gecko also an appropriate water bowl depending on the species that you're keeping in there but in general this is everything you're going to need for this project so let's get working shall we the first thing i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to get the eco earth and my forest moss i'm going to want to get these two things soaking in my bucket of water you can see it comes as a really compact brick but we're going to put it in this water and it is amazing how much water it can hold it can hold a lot so our bucket is actually just over halfway full i'm going to put the whole brick in the water and let that get soaking and I'm going to need some of this forest moss as well, so I'm going to crack into that. This forest moss isn't going to take as long to get hydrated as the Eco Earth will because the brick is smaller and we're going to be using smaller pieces of it as well. But you can see it actually usually comes in kind of little flakes like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break a little bit off. Like that. Go ahead and toss that in. Check that in there. All right, and I'll, I'll save. I'll save the rest. I'll t set that aside. I'm not going to need this until the very end. Okay. Now we'll get to work on the tank. And the things that are going to go in the tank are going to be this branch, these, our sand, a gorilla glue, and when it's ready, our eco earth and our forest moss. So I'll set my rocks aside because I will need those as part of the project. All right, let's cut into this, shall we? So I'll show you a few of the little features. It's got an opening front door, which makes access really nice. But at the same time, you can get in through the top. So if you need to change anything up there, you can. And inside the tank, they've got these little Kind of spring clips and you can you'll notice you can actually break those we're not going to break them not on purpose anyway but if you need to get something like a cord through there you can actually snap one of these out and then run a cord through that hole all right so now that we've got our top put on appropriately we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the tank and we're going to lay it on its back and this is because we're going to let gravity do a lot of the work while we build this. And now we're going to open it up. And this is why these front opening tanks are so nice for this kind of a project. We're going to remove this backdrop that they've got in there. You would never, ever, ever want to actually use this as your backdrop. Uh, at least not on the inside like they have it because this is going to mold and it's going to wrinkle up and it's going to cause all kinds of problems. So. You'll definitely want to pull that out. If you do decide to use it as your backdrop, you can, but you're going to want to attach it on the outside in the back of the tank. You're not going to want to use it on the inside of the enclosure. Make sure everything's really clean in there. You can use a diluted bleach solution to really clean the tank out, and, and that's a, a good practice. Now, our Eco Earth is starting to crumble. So what I'm doing right now is I'm breaking up all the pieces of moss, especially because the, the, the Eco Earth will break apart once it gets properly wet, but the moss will stay together kind of in a brick, and so you need to kind of break it up by hand and then just mix all that you just made together, which that brick plus the water that I had in here actually filled this whole bucket. So it's a lot of stuff. Now... What I'm going to do, and because my hands are a mess, I'm going to get my assistant, Will, to help me pour a little bit of sand into this mixture. You may recognize Will from our second genetics video, where we literally almost killed him with hot sauce. And he has so many talents, including pouring sand. So here we go. All right, I'll tell you when. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, let's stop there for a minute. I put in some sand. And really, this is going to be just how much you would like to see in there. It adds a little bit of density 
which is going to help it stick a little bit better to the backdrop. But you don't need a ton. However, it's hard to go too overboard also. This is just a personal preference amount of sand. Once we've got our mixture all ready to go, we're going to get to work on the Gorilla Glue. And this is a new bottle of Gorilla Glue, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to cut open the top just the regular amount. So you cut that, that little top piece off. So the Gorilla Glue is now ready to go. Now Gorilla Glue is activated by water. And so if you want it to stick, the best thing that you can do is start off getting the surface that you want to get wet a little bit wet, not way wet, but damp. And so we're going to get the whole back of our enclosure wet. Okay, once we've got that wet, we're going to need to put on the Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue is actually the same stuff as expanding foam, the like, good stuff expanding foam, which is also great for reptile enclosures. That's just an aerosolized version that really puffs up huge. Gorilla Glue does expand, though, once it comes into contact with water. So once it gets going, we're going to have the clock sort of counting against us because it's going to get bigger and bigger the longer we let it sit there. I'm going to put down Gorilla Glue where I've got very thin layer that covers the entire back. I'll, I'll do it sort of almost like a, a giant tic-tac-toe board all the way across and, and then I'll, it'll, it'll flatten out, but I want it to cover everything. Any holes that I leave will probably be a hole in my backdrop. As soon as I get the Gorilla Glue on there, I'm going to put the cork on and I'm going to position it right where I want it which is going to be on the back, but not in the first few inches from the bottom because those first few inches are actually going to be covered with my substrate and so they'd be buried and I'd never get to see them. So I'm going to have them up two or three inches off the ground on the backdrop. And then once I've got that in place, I'm going to dump my mixture on top of that. So any gaps anywhere where I don't have cork bark on the back will be covered with this mixture. And then I will put rocks on top of my cork bark pieces. And actually, I'll be putting this on as well, so it stays in place. And I'll be putting rocks on to hold those right where I want them. And every couple minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down my mixture. I'm not going to get Gorilla Glue on my hands because this mixture will be on top of it. But by pushing it down, as the Gorilla Glue expands, I'm actually going to push it back down because otherwise you could probably fill up about a quarter of your tank with just your expanded Gorilla Glue. So pushing on it is really important. Let's get going, shall we? All right, so step one, and I apologize if I disappear from frame, but I can't do this sitting down. So I'm gonna stand up, and I'm gonna just start pouring it out. It's, it's got the consistency of honey. All right, so I'm just getting that matrix, that sort of giant tic-tac-toe board. I'm getting that finished off. I'm making sure any big holes I left are filled in. If there are tiny holes, you don't need to stress about those because the, the glue will expand and it'll fill those areas. And I'm leaving a slight little border, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch along all the sides because it will expand into that area and I don't want it covering up a lot of the sides of the tank. You can potentially have it go onto the side, and that actually looks pretty neat too. So there's a lot of room for you to apply your own style to the way that you do this tank, and that's a lot of fun. Remember, you don't need to worry about getting all the way to the bottom because that will be filled with substrate anyway. But there we go. All right, so that, that step is complete. Cap my Gorilla Glue so it doesn't dry. And I'm going to think, once I position these, they're going to be in there. So you're going to have a little room for style here, too. I've kind of decided I want my cork bark pieces since I've got two. I kind of want them to look like a tree going up the back there. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and set them in there. This one you can see is gonna bulge out a little bit. That can be used as a hide for your animals. It could also be potentially a place where you're gonna have plants. I'm gonna maybe see if I can plant a plant in there, which would be pretty neat, because it can then trail down off the back. But you are gonna just wanna take note of that. And when you're putting your substrate on, you're gonna wanna make sure it gets back in behind there so that you don't have an area where there's just exposed Gorilla Glue. Uh, but I still need to position this stick, and I haven't quite decided exactly how I want to do that just yet. Now's the time, like this. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of my rocks in here on top of that piece of cork bark, which will both hold that cork bark in place and hold my stick right where I want it to be. And I don't have the stick all the way at the bottom either, because remember, there's going to be substrate down there. Okay, so now that I've got my stick in place, I've got everything right where I want it. You want to make sure that you like where you have everything because there's no going back once the Gorilla Glue is hardened. That's not totally true. You can actually scrape everything off with a razor blade and begin anew, but that's a pain. I think I like the way that this looks. I'm going to go ahead and put my screen lid back on, which will make it a little bit harder for you to see what I'm doing in there but I want it to hold the substrate in so I don't have just a huge mess out the front. Get my lid back on. Now what I'm gonna do, first thing, I'm gonna spray water just a little bit on top of the Gorilla Glue. Because your mixture is also wet, that will activate the Gorilla Glue as well. But some water directly on top of it, that's gonna get it going. Starting now, it's really gonna start expanding. So I gotta work somewhat quickly. And therefore, in it goes. In goes the mixture. Ready, set, go. You're going to want to get a fairly decent covering of the mixture on top of everything. Get my rocks in place. Hold down those two things. And don't worry if it seems like too much because all the extra will just fall down into the bottom and be your new substrate. Remember to get it inside of the crevices, anything that's going to be open, unless you want exposed Gorilla Glue, you're going to need to get your mixture on top of it. All right, just go ahead and put in as much of that as you want. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push it down. We're just gonna push, push on it. And what we're gonna notice is that Every few minutes, it's going to start to rise back up. That's because the Gorilla Glue is expanding. And we'll have to push it down some more. And that's all to be expected. So I'm just going to start pushing down on it. You're going to notice every few minutes, it's going to expand back up. And you'll have to push it back down. That's just the Gorilla Glue expanding, just like we said it would. So we shouldn't be surprised, but the more you push it down, the smaller your backdrop will be. If you don't push it down, your backdrop's gonna end up taking up a lot of your enclosure, and you might like that. It becomes a lot like expanding foam at that point. But if that's not what you're going for, you're gonna wanna avoid it by pushing down. All right, and now we're gonna give it a couple minutes. We'll wait for it to start to expand again and then we'll push it down again. This is getting nice and firm now. 
You can see it's not squishing down much because it's getting ready to go. All right. So it's been about an hour since we first put the glue and the substrate on top. And I've checked it, I've pushed it down. It all seems fairly solid. You do not want to rush tilting this back up. In fact, if you wanted to leave it overnight, that wouldn't be a problem at all because then you'd be sure that your backdrop isn't going to fall off as soon as you lift it up. But I'm pretty confident that this is going to work out now. So I'm going to begin by removing the rocks. And I've had a little bit of the Gorilla Glue pop through and kind of attach the rocks to everything else, but that's okay. It'll peel right off. And in fact, you can peel the glue right off of the rocks if you wish to reuse your rocks. Get down in here. This one's a little bit tighter. The main thing is you want to make sure that you don't peel your backdrop off while you're trying to peel your rocks off of your backdrop. Ideally, this doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. Uh-oh. And I've had it happen very much just now. I'm going to scrape the soil down off the backdrop and onto the ground. I'm actually going to take the lid off because it makes it a little easier to get down in there. There we go. Getting in there, just scraping every piece that comes off easily. You don't have to get it all off. In fact, it's kind of nice when it's dangling on there a little bit. Hanging from the backdrop. Making sure I don't accidentally pull that off. Got a really nice looking backdrop though for the most part. Really happy with this. Oh, that's very cool right there. Now I had a little bit of my Gorilla Glue come through the cork bark that I wasn't anticipating. The nice thing is it peels off pretty well for the most part. And just the more time that you want to spend peeling it that, the more of it you'll get off. It'll come right off with time. So it's not a big deal, but I might not peel it all off today. How I could have avoided that if I would have been thinking is I could have put my substrate on before I put the rocks and then at least substrate would have stuck everywhere where the Gorilla Glue came through, but really it doesn't look that bad. What you can see now is that down below I've got a lot of my substrate that was on the back has now fallen down here. And this might not be as much as I want in here. I'm actually going to want to fill it up pretty much to the lip. So I'm going to go back to my original bucket. My bucket of substrate. I'm going to add a little bit more to just fill that area up. And then I can get to work on my plants. Depending on how wet your tank is going to be, if it's a, if it's a tank that's going to be having a, a water fixture in it or something like that, you're going to want to have a layer of hydro balls underneath the substrate. We can include a link to that in the description as well. But if it's a tank like for crested geckos, you actually should have the tank drying out during the day. And so it's really not going to be a, a drainage problem. You're just going to be adding enough water to keep your plants alive and then misting morning and evening shouldn't be a problem. And now I'm going to use my sprayer to just spray down the backdrop to just knock off some of the loose soil. And actually I can turn it to a tighter beam. It'll knock it off a lot better. Just clean everything up. And I think I'm going to want to put a little bit of this moss on the bottom just so that they're not right on dirt. So I'm going to get that soaking. But I'm going to start planting my pothos. So it's a good idea to give your pothos a little rinse off to get any pesticides off. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out of its current pot. You can actually just throw the whole pot in there. But with this plant, I have a feeling what I've actually got are a few little plants. And that's going to be kind of nice because I want to plant a little bit of it up high in that little crevice I left. So I'm pulling it out. I'm going to see if I can separate these plants out from each other. And I was right. There's a root mass for one of them. And I'm just going to go ahead and toss it up in here. Now I'm thinking a big chunk of it right here. This is totally up to you. I feel like Bob Ross today. Creating our own little creation. I'm going to put this happy plant right in here. Let's see. Just want to coax the roots apart. You don't want to be tearing the roots up. Not any worse than you have to anyway. And I've got actually a whole lot of little plants that are making up this one potted plant. Oh yeah. That's the ticket. That is the ticket. I love that. I'm gonna, and with the pothos you can steer them a little bit. So I'm going to have this vine coming up through there like that. Sometimes the plants will look a little goofy right after you first plant them, but they'll right themselves as time goes on and look nicer and nicer in your enclosure. You can, of course, use fake plants, and that will make it so you don't have to have any special lighting just for the plants. That's kind of nice. I do love the real plants. I love the naturalistic enclosure. And if you pick the right plants, and you have the right lighting for them. They really do great. And if you get your bioactive setup set up just right, where you put things like isopods and springtails in there, then it'll actually do most of the cleanup on its own. This is amazing. This is coming together better than I thought it would. All right. Go back. I've got my Moss all hugely inflated. All right. Now that we've got the moss in there, we got the plant in there. It's ready to go. All we got to do now is get is get our light fixture and our lid back on, of course. I've got my Zoom Ed light fixture to match my Zoom Ed enclosure. It's got a 5000K light bulb like these. In there, you need that for your plants. If you need more heat, you might need an incandescent bulb as well, but for things like crested geckos, you're not gonna need that. And now all we do is plug it in and enjoy. Flip on the light, and there it is. I am probably going to spray it a little bit just to clean up some of the dirt that's all over the place in there. We'll clean the tank up a little bit. But there is your enclosure. And it's a wonderful enclosure. Like I said before, if you've got isopods and springtails in there, it's going to be relatively self-cleaning. You'll need to spot clean it every now and then. But for the most part, this tank will run itself. You, you missed it. You take care of your animals. Put your food cups in there and enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us for the build of this awesome enclosure. We have had such a good time. I'm so happy with the way that it turned out. Once again, all the supplies that you would need to duplicate this can be found down in the description and it would really help us out if you'd pick them up from those links. And as always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon. And again, we've got descriptions for those down in the in the links. Jason, do you even use it's the clacking? Does the clacking even help? Am, yes. Are you just giving me this? <laughs> Give me one job? Oh no. So I don't even need to be doing this. You know how I feel right now? I feel like a little kid that just realized that my mom doesn't need help doing the dishes. She can do it just fine on her own. <laughs>